Okay, we are back and we are back for our very last lab. What a journey it's been through the universe, right? We've learned a lot about stars, galaxies, um, lots and lots of stuff from the very beginning till now. So now we do the fate of the universe, the fate and geometry of the universe. Okay. And we've got the, here the fate of the universe, lab 12, introduction. So cosmology asks the big questions. What is the overall structure of the universe? What is its past history? And what will be its future? What are the mathematical principles that govern space and time? The fundamental questions of cosmology become relevant only on distance scales of superclusters and beyond, and on time scales of billions of years. Perhaps the most fundamental question asked by cosmology is, what is the fate of the universe? Will it expand forever or will it eventually recollapse? In this lab, we investigate what modern cosmology has learned about the history and the ultimate fate of the universe. Geometry. The geometry of the universe depends on the mass, energy, and pressure it contains. So the mass and the energy and the pressure. You, the universe has three spatial dimensions and there is no center. If you stand on any galaxy, all the others will appear to be moving away from you with a velocity approximately proportional to the distance from you. That's the, what we saw in the last lab, right? It doesn't matter, you can't say any particular galaxy is at the center of the universe. Determining the geometry of the universe is the same as determining the total mass, energy, and pressure that it contains. In general relativity, geometry and gravity are the same thing, and mass and energy and pressure affect the gravitational field. So geometry and gravity are the same thing, and the mass and energy and pressure affect gravitational field. We will often refer to just mass, but this should be understood to mean mass, energy, and pressure. The force of primary importance in cosmology is gravity because of its long range. In general relativity, the effect of gravity is replaced by the effect of curved space-time on the motion of particles. The universe could be open, negatively curved curvature, flat, which means zero curvature, or closed, meaning positive curvature. We may distinguish three qualitatively different classes of curvatures for surfaces that have two dimensions. As illustrated in adjacent figure, the flat surface is said to have zero curvature. The spherical surface is said to have positive curvature and the saddle shaped surface has negative curvature like this, negative curved, positively curved, zero curved. The space time of general relativity has three space like dimensions and one time like dimensions. It has three classes of curvature analogous to the classes just discussed for two dimensional surfaces. With the simplest assumptions, there are three general possibilities for the geometry of the universe. If space has negative curvature, the universe has no bounds and will expand forever, open universe. So a negatively curved universe will cause the universe to expand forever and it will also be called unbounded, no bounds, and it will be open universe. If space has no curvature, the expansion will stop but only after an infinite amount of time. Flat or Euclidean universe, that would be this one here. If space has positive curvature, the expansion will eventually stop 
and turn into a contraction and be, we will be called the closed universe. That's this one, positively curved. Each of these possibilities is intimately tied to the amount of mass and thus to the total strength of gravitation in the universe. And, and each implies a different past and future for the universe. In addition, these simple outcomes assume that the cosmological constant to be discussed shortly is zero. There is now strong evidence that the effective cosmological constant is actually not zero, which is a finding that may alter the previous simple picture substantially. The cosmic scale factors. The cosmic scale factor is a measure of, of how big the universe is. The size of the universe is usually expressed in terms of a quantity called the cosmic scale factor. It is a measure of how much the spacing between galaxies increases with time as a result of expanding space. We may think of it loosely as a radius for the universe, but the concept of radius really only has a clear meaning if the geometry of the universe is closed. So even though we're calling the scale factor loosely by the term radius, but truly radius only has meaning in a closed universe, <clears throat> it says, which is, means a positively curved space. Cosmic scale factor. So the cosmic scale factor tells you how big the universe is as a function of the time. Originally, it was believed that the addition of a cosmological constant was a mistake. However, recent observations suggest that the cosmological constant is not zero. Uh, Einstein himself said uh, he was the one who actually put in the cosmological constant into his general relativity equations. And then he said it was the greatest blunder of my life. And then now it turns out that actually there is probably a cosmological constant. When Einstein first realized that the solution of his equations of general relativity led to universes that were either expanding or contracting, he was dismayed. At the time, the expansion of the universe had not yet been discovered, you see? So he thought that the universe was static, that it wasn't expanding or contracting. It hadn't been discovered that it, had, it was expanding yet. So to get a static universe, he added something to his equations that stabilized the universe against expansion. The added ingredient has come to be known as the cosmological constant or the vacuum energy density. The cosmological constant is commonly denoted by the symbol lambda. This is the Greek letter L, capital L, lambda. Later, Hubble showed that the universe was not static, but actually expanding leading to Einstein to term the cosmological constant as his biggest blunder, but not, so <clears throat> but not so fast. There still might be a non-zero cosmological constant if it is very small. An issue of fundamental importance in astronomy is whether the cosmological constant is exactly zero or, ju or just very, very small. Type 1a supernovae and fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background have been used to estimate the rate of change in the expansion rate of the universe. And it appears based upon this data that the expansion of the universe is actually accelerating rather than decelerating. So that means that something is causing the universe uh, to be accelerating its expansion. As we would have expected from normal so it says, based upon this data, that the expansion of the universe is accelerating rather than deceler decelerating, as we would have expected from normal gravitational attraction of the mass in the universe. This highly surprising result is difficult to explain unless the cosmological constant is small, but non-zero, you see? So we've come back recently to starting to believe in the cosmological constant. The accelerating universe. The cosmological constant describes a pressure exerted by empty space. This pressure could appear like a form of anti-gravity, forcing masses apart. 
if the cosmological constant is not exactly zero, then empty space is permeated with an energy called the vacuum energy. And you might have heard the term dark energy. Uh, it's kind of like sounds like dark matter, but this is different. It's dark energy or vacuum energy. This is why the cosmological constant is sometimes discussed in terms of the vacuum energy density. It is now also popular to call this vacuum energy density dark energy. Dark energy has a very unusual property relative to normal matter or energy. It has negative pressure. <clears throat> so you see anti-gravity, it causes the background of the dark energy pushes objects apart. Two masses attract each other gravitationally. However, the background of dark energy with its negative pressure exerts a force on them to separate them as if they were repelling each other. That is, they exhibit what appears to be small amount of anti-gravity. This anti-gravity effect could account for the accelerated expansion implied by the type 1a supernova data. Okay, so not too big, not too difficult, just the ideas, and then they just give you a question based on that. And uh, you just submit the answer, and that's all for that part. No math, nothing, cool stuff. Okay. So then we go to the fate of the universe. Another way of describing the geometry of the universe is through a density parameter, omega naught. This is the capital Greek letter omega. If omega naught is between zero and one, then the universe is open. If it is greater than the one, the universe is closed. Uh, the universe is only flat if omega is exactly equal to one. Uh, the universe is currently expanding. One extremely important cosmological question is whether this expansion will continue forever. Ultimately, the answer to this question hinges on the geometry of the universe as determined by how much mass it contains and on whether the cosmological constant is zero or has a small finite non-zero uh, value. So, so far there's the cosmological constant, which is the lambda from the previous slides. That's the cosmological constant. And then the density parameter is the density of all the mass and energy in the universe. So lambda naught. So scale factor. So this is the expansion of the universe and the scale factor. And then lambda naught is less than one, then the universe will be open. Flat would be lambda naught equals to one. Lambda naught greater than one would be closed. So right now we're living in an expanding universe, you see? It's still getting larger, but is it gonna keep getting larger and then contract? Or gonna keep increasing in size? Or is it gonna keep increasing even more and more? So the, the, the geometry is often expressed in terms of the density parameter omega naught, which is defined to be the ratio of the actual density of the universe to the critical density that would just be required to cause the expansion to stop after an infinite time. So the density parameter omega naught would be rho over rho naught. So in terms of the actual density rho and the critical density rho naught, if rho is equal to rho naught, then omega naught would be one and it would be a, it would expand forever for infinite time. Uh, and then it would stop after infinity. It would stop expanding. Thus, if the universe is flat, contains just the critical density, the density parameter is exactly one, you see? If the universe is open, has negative curvature, the density parameter lies between zero and one. And if the universe is closed, has positive curvature, the density parameter is greater than one. These three possible categories for the large scale geometry of the universe I summarized in the adjacent figure in terms of the density parameter omega naught. For the simple case of a zero cosmological constant, we'll tackle the non-zero case uh, uh, soon. So here, 
they are giving you the possible fates of the universe, depending on the omegas, assuming that the cosmological constant was zero, assuming there was no expect, uh, vacuum energy. If there is no vacuum energy, then this would be true. If omega was less than one, it would be open. Omega equals one flat. Omega greater than one, it would be closed. Age. If we ignore the cosmological constant, <clears throat> uh, then it is expected that the age of the universe will be less than is predicted by the Hubble law for all possible geometry of the universe. So if we ignore the lambda, in other words, the cosmological constant lambda, then the age of the universe is less than predicted by the Hubble law for all of the geometries. The, ge the geometrical issues that determine the fate of the universe also determine its age. The inverse of the Hubble constant H is an approximation for the age of the universe. In the absence of a cosmological constant, the tree of the age of the universe is expected to be less than one over H, which is equal to H to the negative one power. Uh, I think they meant to write here H to the power negative one. Uh, because we expect that the Hubble constant changes with time as the expansion is slowed by gravity. Uh, the adjacent figure illustrates this point by showing the size of the universe, uh, by the size of the universe, or more precisely the scale factor, plotted against time for several different geometrical assumptions. The straight dash line is the Hubble law. So you see, this is the closed density, omega. This is the flat, this is the open, and this is if there's no mass at all just the constant Hubble uh, constant. In other words, this is if the Hubble parameter is not changing. So the age of the universe would be how far back you have to go, and that would be one over the Hubble constant. So the, the one over the Hubble constant, in other words, provides the maximum age of the universe for a universe that contains no matter. That's if there is no cosmological constant. So all of these universes, open universe is the oldest of the age. Uh, flat would be the second oldest and the closed would be the youngest. Uh, but then it's gonna turn out that the expanding universe can actually be even older than one over the Hubble constant. Or could be, uh, it could be, yeah, older than the Hubble constant or it could be between this red and the one over the age. It could be like right there. So uh, right here, this shows you a zoom in of that with the open, the flat, the closed, and then the dotted line would be Hubble parameter is a constant value. So the straight dash line is the Hubble law. The other curves correspond to various amounts of gravitational slowing of the expansion due to the mass contained in the universe as seen in the inset magnified view. The curves have been adjusted so that they all have the same slope at the present time, the same current value of the Hubble constant, but they diverge from each other in the distant past and the distant future. The age of the universe corresponds to the difference between the time mark now, which is here, this is now, and then going backwards to when the universe exploded, began. So that would be the age of the universe there in the blue model, and then the yellow, and then the red, and then the purple. So, and the intersection of the realm curve with the horizontal axis. Notice that in general, the ages for the open, flat, and closed curves in the absence of a cosmological constant gives ages for the universe that are less than one over H. Now, cosmological constant and age. So how does the cosmological constant affect things? If the cosmological constant is non-zero, then the age of the universe could be larger than is predicted by the Hubble law. Okay, so you see what's happening here? This is a flat universe, which is Q is 0.5. And I, we mentioned that uh, last time with the Q parameter, the deceleration parameter, right? 
So a flat universe would have a lambda is zero. That would be the, um, uh, the lambda would be zero, no cosmological constant. That'd be a flat universe and that will be deceleration is 0.5. And that would correspond to this guy. That would correspond to the same as this, uh, this one, the flat universe here, you see? So the flat universe here would be Q is 0.5, lambda is zero, okay? Then we go to here. This is if the deceleration parameter is not, is negative, less than zero. That means something is causing the Hubble constant to actually increase. So you see what's happening here is that the Hubble constant is the slope of this line. The slope is decreasing, 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 and then is presently now increasing. You see, we're living in an expansion stage right here. Whereas with the other uh, curvatures, in the language of calculus, we say these uh, curves are all concave down. So they're all, their slopes are all decreasing, you see? The slopes are concave down. And then these, the uh, accelerating universe is concave down and then it has an inflection point here, after which it starts getting concave up like this, you see? And then the universe starts expanding. So then that's, that kind of universe will have positive um, Hubble, no, will have positive uh, cosmological constant and the deceleration parameter will be negative, which means it's actually accelerating. And then that universe could actually be older than one over the Hubble constant. So it says, if the cosmological constant is non-zero, the behavior of the universe can be modified substantially as the adjacent figure illustrates. The purple curve corresponds to the pure Hubble law constant expansion rate, while the orange curve corresponds to the previous flat universe example, assuming in both cases a zero cosmological constant. The blue curve corresponds to the inclusion of a positive cosmological constant with a flat geometry. So this is would be, the blue would be flat geometry, which means it, the, the, the omega will still be equal to one, it's still flat geometry, but it's expanding universe. We note here without explanation that it is an inescapable conclusion of the theory of inflation that the universe should be flat. So we already do know that the universe is more or less flat. So uh, that means the omega must be equal to one. We know that from doing other observations as well. <clears throat> the introduction of the cosmological constant leads to two fundamental effects. For large periods of time, the cosmological constant causes the expansion of the universe to accelerate. A cosmological constant or vacuum energy implies that the universe can be open and expand forever, even if it contains more than a critical density of matter. The true age of the universe may be larger than we would infer from the present value of the Hubble constant rather than smaller. Okay, so we've got a, now some equation. Because it appears that the universe is flat, the total density parameter, lambda zero must be equal to one. So remember lambda zero, oh sorry, omega zero was the density of all matter, the ratio of the density of all matter divided by the critical density needed for flatness. Current measurements estimate the contribution from matter to be about 0.3 and from vacuum energy to be 0.7. The contribution from radiation currently appears to be negligible. So in the presence of a finite cosmological constant, the critical density parameter is a sum of three terms. One coming from the mass energy density, which is this guy, omega mat matter. And that matter includes dark matter and regular matter. So 30% of the universe is dark matter plus regular matter. That's called baryonic matter. 
So that's stuff that we're made of and stars that are made of, plus the dark matter that we haven't, we don't really know what it is. So together they are 30% of the universe. That 70% of the mass energy in the universe is the dark energy. And then the radiation energy is very negligible. Omega radiation. So it says in the presence of a finite cosmological constant, the critical density parameter is a sum of three terms. Okay, so we said that. So omega lambda is rho lambda over rho zero. Rho m is matter energy density. Omega zero is total density parameter. Rho r is radiation energy density. Rho L is vacuum energy density. Rho zero is critical energy density. And rho M is matter energy density parameter. Rho R, radiation energy density parameter. And rho L is the vacuum energy density parameter. So the condition that the universe be flat then requires that the total density parameter be equal to one, which can be filled, fulfilled even if the matter density is not critical. For example, the current cosmological solution favored by the pertinent data is a flat universe doc dominated by vacuum energy with less than a critical mass density. So then you see you have here 0.3, then you've got here 0.7, then they add up to one and this is approximately zero. So right now we, we think we believe that the we do live in a flat universe, but it's an accelerating flat universe. Which of the following are expected results of a non-zero cosmological constant? Then again, we just answer this and then submit answer. That's it for that part. Expansion history simulator, simulation. The value of omega naught as determined by the matter of radiation and vacuum energy densities will determine both the age and the ultimate evolution of the universe. Okay, this one seems like it's got a lot of stuff in there. No, this is an image of the calculator, not the calculator. The button doesn't work in this image. <laughs> I tried to connect. So this is just a lot of uh, stuff going on in that image. Uh, in this section, we will do a series of exercises using a calculator illustrated here that solves the equations of general relativity for the evolution of the scale factor for the universe. These calculations will emphasize the role of four basic quantities in determining how the universe has evolved in the past and how we will evolve in the future. The Hubble constant H0, which characterizes the present rate of expansion, the energy density of relativistic matter, which we will term the radiation energy density. See the energy density of relativistic matter so that's radiation energy density, which was the called the omega r. The energy density of non-relativistic matter, which we will term matter energy density, and the vacuum energy density. Instructions. Okay, so, so it's got here oh, a lot of stuff for us to play with. Sliders controlling parameter values show energy densities, show redshift scale, show Hubble law, plot current parameters. Uh, again, but this is probably just a picture. Yeah, it's just a picture. Uh, the time axis at the bottom is measured in billions of years relative to today, which has a value of zero. So we're calling the present time zero so a time of negative eight means eight billion years before today. For each choice of the parameters, the intercept of the curve, defining how the scale factor evolves with time is the age of the universe. In other words, if we go back 
8 billion years, that means the universe expanded, started its expansion 8 billion years ago, and therefore the x-intercept of the graph is the age of the universe. Uh, in the, okay, so it says here, for each choice of the intercept of the, in the example shown, the intercept is about negative 13. Let's see if that's true here. You can't really see it that well, but yeah, you can kind of see, uh, let's see if it's negative 13. Yeah, you see here? So that means the universe started 13 billion years ago, if, if those graphs were true, you see? So this is the present day right here, and then you're going back 13 billion years ago, and that would be the expansion of the universe. The Hubble parameter is given in units of kilometers per second per megaparsec. Okay, so let's scale it down. The simulation helps you explore the expansion history of the universe. Use sliders to set the values of density parameters, omega and the value of the Hubble parameter. Okay. Press the plot new button to generate the curve corresponding to these parameters. You can plot several lines by changing the parameters and pressing the plot new button. You may change the line width in the line width box uh, and line transparency in the line alpha box. Choose the color of the curve in the line color box. Oh, okay. It's like we're feeling like we're gods here. We can create our own expanding bubble universes. So line width, what does the line uh, alpha do? And, uh, you know, and the line transparency in the line alpha box. And then the color, okay, let's say blue. Hubble constant, 72. That would be the present value of the Hubble constant. If the present value of the Hubble constant is 70, Okay, let's say radiation density is, is zero. Let's say the matter density is, that's again, dark matter plus regular matter. Uh, let's say it's 20%. Let's say the cosmological constant, the, let's say the, this is 0.8. So this plus this is one. And this is zero. So now let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. So the Hubble constant, the Hubble line will be given by the present value of the Hubble constant, at which is 70. I gave it 70. So that means a universe that have the Hubble constant of 70. And if it always had a, a Hubble constant of 70, its age will be how old? negative 12, about negative um, 14 billion years old. If its Hubble constant was always 70, that means if we plotted the scale factor of that universe, the x-intercept would be negative 14, and it would be 14 billion years old. But now, if I want to plot the universe with these parameters, I say plot new. Ah, you see that? In other words, the given Hubble constant of 0, 0.2, 0, 0.L, uh, TH would be the 13.9. Oh, TH would be the age of the universe for the this line, for the straight line, which I approximated as 13. Remember I said it was 14? So that's the age of the universe for uh, if it doesn't have any matter at all inside of it, constantly expanding at a constant rate of 70.1. But that accelerating universe would have an age of 15 billion years old. You see? Wow, this is amazing. It does all the calculations for you. But now how about if I wanted to do a universe where there is less expansion, less cosmological constant, let's say more matter, you can like play around with it, let's say 0.6, and let's say still no radiation uh, density, right? 
then what's going to happen? Uh, so that means the sum of these two is not even one anymore. And this is zero. So the sum of these three is, is not even one. So that means it won't even be a flat universe for this one, right? If the, the sum of these three is, are not flat as one, then it's not a flat universe. So then what is that gonna be? Um, then, then change the color of that one, plot new. Oh, okay. So then it would uh, the, be younger. It'd be only 10.8 billion years old that universe, but it would expand, it would be open, right? It would be open. Uh, so if you forgot the wording of these, what they're called, have the other page open for you, the other one that we started with, and then refer back to those to know what they're called. Because these terms, sometimes they are hard to remember. So go back to... Geometry. Uh, not that one. So is it that one? No, I think it's the next one. State of the universe. No, was it? Okay, so. So if the, this would be open, if the lambda is less than one. Okay, so that would be that one. That would be that one that we created, you see? It's open, that'd be this red one. And what would its shape be? Uh, what would its shape be? Then we go over here and we look at its shape on the next page. Um, where were the shapes? Mm, let's see here. I have to have a couple uh, things open. You have to have a couple things open here. The open versus closed, and then the shapes open. Mm. I think that was the first one, the geometry, right? When we talked about the shapes. Oh yeah, yeah, positive curvature. Positive curvature. So if space has negative curvature, the universe has no bounds and will expand forever. Open universe. So that means open universe is this one. Uh, no bounds will expand forever. Open universe. So if, the, if it's open universe, the, the shape of the universe is um, negatively curved right here. So this one is equivalent to being like this one. Um, so open right there, it's negatively curved. And then closed will be uh, positively curved right here, positively curved. And then if it is flat, it will be um, zero curvature. It will be the equivalent of zero curvature, which is known as Euclidean geometry. So now I could also try another one where the cosmological constant is zero. No cosmological constant at all, but I could give it radiation pressure, a lot of radiation pressure. Uh, plot new, try a different color. Ah, I see that. So now the age of the universe is 6.7 billion years old. 
and it looks like it could even be closed. It might even be gonna go and then come back and close on, on in on itself. You see, so you could have all kinds of different combinations. Now, what would happen if you change the Hubble constant and then make another one similar to what we just did? Just change the color, plot new. You see, well, it's gonna change a couple of things when you change the Hubble constant. It's gonna create a new straight line. And then it's gonna change, of course, from the green here to here. So if you reduce the Hubble constant, it changes the age of the universe from, it changes from green to this blue. So it goes from 6.7 billion years old to 8.5 billion years old. And the Hubble age of the universe goes from 13.9 to 17.7. .7. So just simply decreasing the Hubble constant increases the age of the universe for all the models, you see? This jumps to here, and then this jumps to here, just reducing the Hubble constant. If you reduce it some more, plot new, you see? And it bumps it even more from 8.5 to uh, 9.4, you see? Then it also creates a new uh, Hubble uh, age. So this is known as the Hubble age. 19.6, 17.7, you see? So those are all the different things. Oh, we could also have a grid. Let's see, does it show? Oh, that's nice to have a grid, yeah. Densities, fractional energy density. Oh, it even shows you the vacuum matter and radiation density. Oh, wow. Let's see, clear. Let's say we have uh, 70. God, so many things that they packed here. 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Let's see here, plot new. Uh, density. Ah, I see, fractional energy density. The energy density started out purely uh, as uh, matter and then vacuum energy took over. You see what's gonna happen at the moment that the green line is the vacuum energy density. So as the matter is expanding, as the universe is expanding, the density of the universe, the matter density of the universe is getting less and less and less. The energy density of the universe is getting more and more and more. And the radiation density is, there's no radiation density. So when the instant that the green line, the vacuum density surpasses the radiation density, sorry, when the vacuum density surpasses the matter density, that's when the acceleration of the universe begins. You see here, the change of concavity from concave down to concave up. That means the universe starts accelerating. When does that acceleration of the universe begin? So it starts about 4 billion years ago. So if this were the lambda, the M and the lambda L, that would mean this is the present we are now here. And then matter density fell below the vacuum density about 4. Point, uh, about 4.2 billion years ago, you see? And then the universe started expanding and will continue to expand forever. So that means we're, it's not just now that it's starting to expand. It all depends on what these parameters are, of course. So I want you to show that grid when you're doing the snapshots. That's really interesting. And then you can match this, the intersection of this to when the expansion is beginning. Oh my God, just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. How many things this, show, this is showing? What is the redshift showing? Uh, the redshift is showing um, scale factor. Oh, okay. So that means, remember when the bigger the redshift, the universe was smaller. Remember we were looking at, oh my gosh, this is as so many things. 
It answers a lot of your questions. Remember how we were getting the age of the universe from their redshift? So something was that was a galaxy that was like 1.2 redshifts away. So then imagine, go here and then go across, you see, from your grid, go across, and then you could say, oh, okay, look how many billion years ago that was. Eight billion years ago, that object, the light left that object and is coming towards us. You see, so that, that object is eight billion light years away, you see, in that universe with a Hubble, uh, with a redshift of one. A redshift of three, the object is 12 billion years. You see, you just go like this, you just go like that, and you say, oh, if we live in that accelerating universe, then that means that uh, the object is 12 billion years away from us. In other words, the, the object was born 12 billion years ago, and that's when the light has left it and coming towards us. Oh, so there's a lot of information that's packed in there. Start. Using the expansion history calculated above, set all the omega values to zero using the three sliders and the public parameter A0 to 50. Choose a color using the color selection and click the plot button to generate the corresponding curve. Uh, repeat this for A0 values of 72 and 80, choosing a different color for the curve each time. Toggle the redshift scale on by clicking the redshift button. Then fill out the table below from the information displayed on the plot for each of the values of the Hubble parameter that you plotted. Note that the age of the universe is the negative of the intercept. The age corresponding to a given redshift is determined by finding the redshift of the redshift axis, moving horizontally to the curve for the scale parameter and then vertically to the horizontal axis. In example above, a redshift of one corresponds to, oh, let's see here. Yeah, so you see the eight, redshift of one, then you shift it to here, then uh, you go like this, let's see here. Redshift of one, you go here, then you go down. So exactly, this is exactly doing what I was just saying to do right there. So in the example above, a redshift of one corresponding to an intercept of negative eight uh, on the horizontal axis, implying that the redshift of one corresponds to a time eight billion years ago when the light was emitted. Okay, so then we're, for the first one, we're only gonna do the Hubble. We're only gonna do the Hubble one, so uh, clear. So let's say you put the Hubble at three different values clear uh, oh I see as you're changing it it's already creating one so uh, let's see red green and then you put all of these to zero and then you say Hubble let's say 70. Uh, plot. Okay, so that becomes your plot if all of them are zero. Then you go over here, uh, redshift. Oops. Okay, so then what would we have to do? Uh, Age of universe, time of redshift equals one, billions years ago. Okay, so if it's one, then you're just gonna go here. You're gonna go horizontally until the one corresponds to uh, right there. So see, go like this. Until the one corresponds to the green line. Then you take a snapshot right there. See here. So the age of the universe would be what? Uh, seven point, uh, it'd be 
basically this is eight, so it'd be seven point, let's see here, this is six, this is seven, so 7.5. Yeah, about 7.5 billion years old. So for seven, uh, which one did I do? 70. So again, there's probably some margin of error here. I'm doing 69.2. So then that'd be uh, margin of error, age of universe, billions of years. So that'd be 7.5 billion about I did that for the Hubble constant of 69. Time of redshift, billions of years, age of universe. Oh no, age of the universe would be the, age of the universe would just be the TH, the 14.1 right here. So that one's easier to read because it's also given here. So that's 14.1. So there'll be 14.1 billion and then this one would be 7.2. Of course, if I submit it, it's probably gonna say wrong because I did mine for 69. Okay. Let's see, so a red, in other words, a, a galaxy which is displaying a redshift of one would be almost 8 billion years away, okay? So that's kind of what it wants you to practice. Uh, time of the redshift plus the age of the universe. So that one, you would take three snapshots and the snapshot should show this whole thing showing uh, you taking this, dragging it to that color, right? And then doing one, another color for a different one, right? And then it should show the number here. So three snapshots for that. Then we go to question two. Now let's investigate the behavior universes that consist only of matter, no radiation or vacuum energy density. Using the expansion history calculator, click clear to remove any previous calculation. Set the omega values corresponding to the density parameters to zero. Using the three sliders, set the Hubble parameter to 72 and choose a color for the curve, then click plot new to generate the corresponding curve. Repeat this for values of omega to 0.25. So that means you're gonna set the density of matter to zero, 0.25, 0.751. So here what you're doing is or changing the Hubble, keeping the Hubble constant the same, but only changing the mass density. That's perfect example of science. You change only one thing at a time and you see that how that affects things. So how is that gonna affect the age of the universe the point, the, in all four of these cases? So then again, that should be four snapshots. One, two, three, four for each one. Then you go to next. Now we investigate behavior that consists only of radiation using the expansion. So set the 72, plot everything else to zero. And then the radiation put it on 0 0.25.751. And also of course, make, make these show the, the other one, which one was it? The densities, the vacuum density that's very interesting to see when they crisscross <clears throat> each other. Uh, so of course, if this is some value and none of the other ones are zero, what should happen? Um, the universe should only have radiation density. None of the other vacuum and matter don't even exist in that universe, you see? So there's no crisscrossing happening. So then again, that would be four snapshots. Then question four, now you set the other one zero, I believe, using the expansion history, click clear, set the Hubble parameter to 72. That's actually a good value that they're using because 72 is one of the possible present day values of the Hubble constant. Repeat this four values of lambda L equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 0 0.99, choosing a different color for each curve. You should now have three curve plots. And then so again, four more snapshots here. 
And then finally, finally, let's investigate the case corresponding to what we think are the best current values for the parameters governing the evolution of the universe. So presently, we believe the radiation is zero, the mass is 0.3, and vacuum energy to be 0.7. The curve corresponds to a flat universe because the sum of density parameters is approximately one. Uh, so then it says the vacuum energy is 70% and the mass is 30% of energy density, but it's mostly made of dark matter. Click the densities button from the energy density curves. How long ago was it when amount of vacuum energy first became larger than, oh, that's, they're asking for the crisscross right there. So definitely you have to make that show. So in other words, right now, we are exactly analyzing our particular situation. When did the expansion of the universe begin? That's essentially what they're asking here. How many billion years ago did we start expanding? Then vacuum energy took over and started winning out over energy, over, uh, yes, mass and energy density. The, this vacuum energy density started winning. Click densities again to hide the densities and click the redshift button to display the redshift scale. Use this scale and this choice of cosmological parameters to fill out the table below. Redshift one, billion years old, billion years ago. And then three, billion years ago. This is the one where you have to shift. <clears throat> so basically you just put this on the present values and uh, you, from the crisscross, you, sh you can determine when, when the, the, this expansion, the, when the vacuum energy took over. And then you do, uh, there's probably be one picture just for that to show the crisscross. And then you can uncheck the crisscross and then focus on this one. And then move over this again, this one. So what you would do is move it over to not the Hubble line, but the actual your line. So whatever your line was, you see, let's say this is zero. Uh, let's say clear. So let's say your line is this. So then you would go like that. And then you would put the, wherever the three is right there. You see, so then make sure you don't cover the three. So it's like that, right there. And see, crisscrossing your particular line, not the Hubble line. But the Hubble line and your line are very close anyway, probably. Uh, and then the one would be right there. You see? So you could probably expand it more. So you can tell exactly. There's slight difference between the Hubble line. You see like the Hubble line for three, it's probably okay. There's not much difference between the Hubble line and the green line. And then for one, there is a slight difference. You see, this is the, your expansion line and this would be for the Hubble universe. See, so this would be the, the universe, the actual universe's age. You see, so there's slight difference there. And then you would put that, those billion years old here. You know, so two snapshots for, well, actually, uh, yeah, this would be two snapshots because you're moving it over different amounts. Review. So the more matter and radiation dominate, the more likely the universe will eventually collapse. And the younger the universe is, conversely, the, the more the vacuum energy dominates, the more likely the universe will expand forever and the older the universe is. Astronomers currently believe that vacuum energy dominates our universe, leading to an eternal inflation, expansion. General histories of the cosmic expansion for different assumptions about mass density and vacuum energy density in the universe are summarized in the adjacent diagram. This diagram systematizes many of the results that you have just obtained. You see all these plots that they made, all the possible plots depending on what the values of the 
different expansions are and those different uh, factors. The acceleration parameter, this is redshift amounts. These are possible scale factors of the universe. So it, anything between this and this are universes that are eternally expanding between all the way from here, all the way there. there. The orange ones are eternally accelerating universes. You see, those are eternally accelerating universes. These are eternally expanding, but they're not accelerating. This one eventually collapse. It's gonna go and go and go and then collapse back. Okay. So it says the lower curves marked in green are solutions dominated by mass density. You see, that means they have more mass density and less ener vacuum energy density. These are similar solutions. The dark gray regions in the diagram always decelerate because of the gravitational slowing caused by the mass density. The upper curves marked in orange are solutions where vacuum energy density dominates. These solutions and others like them, the light gray region, uh, first decelerate, but later accelerate because of the increasing dominance of vacuum energy as the volume of the universe increases. The solution currently favored by the supernova data and the microwave background and isotropies correspond to one of the intermediate curves in the light blue region. So we're like kind of uh, probably one of these intermediate ones. Like it doesn't really say which one, but probably like right there. We're one of those. We're basically one of the ones that leads to an age of the universe around 13, 14 billion years old. I think so. We're probably this one right here. You see, like there. But then they're squeezed into the same region here because this is our present world. This is all the data. In other words, all of them are the same together. They support our data now, but they would only be different in the past and they would only be different in the future. That's why they're all squeezed into the same thing here. Because all of these models are already supported by our present data. That's why they're squeezed in there. So it says this universe corresponds to the case that you just investigated with 70% of the energy density in vacuum energy and 30% in mostly dark matter with negligible radiation. Cool, and I think, I think that ends it. It's kind of sad, but yet, glad we're glad that the course ended and uh, we are done but hopefully you will always continue your study of the universe and you had a new appreciation for math as well as astronomy as well as the whole all of the different aspects of astronomy that we've covered through the labs okay guys thank you very much bye bye